Today in Flying Sparks Garage, we get more wiring done on our Holly Sniper EFI on our early Bronco. Morning. We're starting our day off on hold with Holly's tech line. Um, I'm giving them a ring because we've been looking at the instructions this morning and trying to decipher how we wire up our distributor. We have an ignition box or like the coil that's a box. Um, and so we're kind of confused as to how to properly wire that up. So we thought we would give them a call so that we can be sure and do it right. As we're making mistakes as we go, we kind of want to like minimize that. So, I'm going to talk to these guys and see if they can help us. A new song started and I thought it was someone picking up. This kind of jams. How are you this morning? Good, how are you? I'm doing good too. Okay, so I have never uh, installed an EFI. My husband and I have been reading the instructions and trying to decipher where our questions are. And one of the things we're hung up on is we're wondering if the distributor we have will work with um, being able to utilize timing control and things like that. So I wanted to tell you our part number and see if you could tell me if we need a coil or if the coil's built in or all of that good stuff and you could educate us. Which uh, fuel injection is where you're at? We've got the, um, the Sniper EFI. What's the part number? It is um, 550-511. Okay. And the distributor that we have is part number 83521. Okay. So you're not going to be able to do time and control with that distributor. If, you're, if you do want to install it, the gray wire coming off of it, you'll hook it to the single purple wire adapter that came with the sniper. Okay, excellent. So then we won't have timing control, but it will work. We just won't have that feature. Well, I guess that answers our question, right, Aaron? Mm -hmm. Now, would you suggest us to get a different, different distributor so that we can utilize the timing control this is just an old ford bronco so it's not a super high performance application but is it better to have that timing control option uh, it is um, a lot of people will do it just so they can get the full use out of the sniper system but it's not anything that is required um, whenever you do uh, hook it up to that distributor though when you go through the wizard make sure you set it on cd box cd box okay fantastic i really appreciate your help you're welcome all right, bye. Well, that answered our question. Yep. It really would be nice to have the timing control if we had a different distributor, but we can always do that upgrade later, right? Yeah, yeah, we can. Aaron's sitting right up there, so I'm talking to him and not you. <laughs> now we have to get to work, Aaron. You have to get to work. What are you gonna do? I'm retired from wiring. <laughs> Mm -hmm. After a very successful tech call, we proceeded to do a whole bunch of other wiring that wasn't the actual wiring we called the tech guy about. Yep, time to get some more wiring done. Instructions in hand. Wow. We've just got a few wires to connect to our coil from our distributor so that we can have power to it. And then we're on to building the spark plug wires. Let's get going. Oh, right. I'm going to start with our ground wire and I'm going to put an eyelet end on it and get it to where we can take it down to this bolt for grounding. Get us a little piece of heat shrink. Got a good size eyelet here so we can go around that bolt. And it's crimped. Okay, y'all. Done. Check one off the list. We have our orange and our red, which both go to the coil. The orange is the negative, I believe. Yep, orange ready to run distributor to negative coil. And then the red is the ready to run distributor wire to positive coil. 
and we're gonna put ends on these so that we can disconnect them easily. Yeah. Okay, time to get our wire extensions. Figure out what length we want them to get them up and out of the way, and then over to the coil. I'm gonna strip the end of this and I'm gonna put the connector onto it already. Connect it to whichever wire I'm gonna choose, the red or the orange, and then route it to where I want it so that I get it to my exact desired length, and then put my other connector on it. That's my plan. Y'all, I am very new at wiring, so you can tell me down in the comment section better ways to do it, things that I'm missing, things that I could be doing more efficiently or whatever. Cause I'm sure there's lots. Aaron tries to teach me, but. But I don't know what I'm doing either. I've done a lot of wiring because I've built a lot of cars, but I've definitely never had a professional teach me. I'm getting the feeling I'm about to get hit in the face. I want to move over here. <laughs> <laughs> now that's exactly where I was standing. Yeah. Right there. She would have nailed me. Papa. <laughs> Broke my glasses. <laughs> Oh, man. This is a heavy duty wire, man. It's like small, but it's mighty. That's what they say about me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, noon. Noon, church bills. Church bills. Anybody else have church bells that play um, in their local town? Or are we the only precious little small East Texas town that has a church close enough to hear the church bells? All right, y'all, we got our first extension wire done. The problem is we need two of them. Hey, babe, why don't you clap this out? Oh, nice. All right, let's get these installed. So we decided we want to case these before we install them. We want to put them in the loom. So I did just a little bit of red on each of the ends of our red wire so that we know which one's red and which one is the orange. Okay, they're both tight. Last thing is to add that connector onto our purple wire so that we can connect our purple and gray. So this is the last wire that's gonna come around to the distributor. It is a purple wire that comes from the main harness and it's for the crank signal. We discussed the routing on it and we really feel like it needs to come up and around this fender well. Of course, we have to be careful where we route it because we don't want to get it too close to our main power wire because of noise in the wiring system. So the power wire is up here. I'm like, is down here far enough away? Aaron said that it was. So that's where we've decided to route it. I'm not putting loom on it quite yet, but I will put two pieces of heat shrink, one for this end and one for the end that goes into the distributor. Okay. All right, let's give it a tug and hope that it stays. Ah, cool. Okie dokie, it's plugged in. Well, I'm trying to set up my shot for uh, building spark plug wires and somebody thinks that he belongs on the table that I wanna work at. He jumped up in his mechanics chair and then he sat on the table. What a goober. Finley, what are you doing on that table? That's my work table, bud. Yeah, it is. Wow, awesome shot. The Bronco, Zen, Garfield, and the shop dog. Oh, buddy. Oh, so cute. Oh, my goodness, he's just so cute. Just so funny and cute. He's gonna lay down now. Oh, hi. Hi. I just got this shot set up. Finley was taking a nap on my table. Check out my work. Looks good. Do you approve? Yeah. Cool. Finley is just too dang cute.
because we've never really shown the actual process of building your own spark plug wires, I thought I would make a separate episode with this process. That episode will be found on this channel in the early Bronco playlist. We just dropped the blue fuel pump wire back down behind the transmission and I'm getting ready to get underneath the Bronco on the creeper, parentheses. It's a pain in the butt to put the Bronco on the lift, so I'm gonna use a creeper, close parentheses, and figure out where we wanna route this wire. We just did a thing. We cut all of this out from underneath the frame rails of the Bronco, gross, awful, dead wiring that someone had put in here for the system, for the speakers under the back seat, for an amplifier that's under the driver's seat, unneeded, gross, and now we know where we're gonna route our fuel pump wire right down the frame, and it's gonna look sweet. And it's not gonna have all this junk next to it. Trash. Let's do this. Okay, so I just went over the top of the transmission. I think I'm going to secure it to this first kind of brace that's on the bottom of the body, um, bringing it down from this side, going up and around the transmission to get it over to the driver's side. So then once we get it over to the driver's side, then we've got access to these factory loops that we can house the wire in to go all the way down the frame rail and back to the pump. I'm just gonna send it back and mock it up. current plan. I've got a little bit of heat shrink. This is going to go all the way up my blue wire and up to the front where the wire comes out of the harness. And then I'm going to get my loom all installed onto my wire so that it is nice and protected. Get that loom all the way back to the tank where the pump is and then it'll be time for termination. Ah yeah. I'm going in. Maybe if I can make it not awkward. Too late. Sweet. Cool. And the rest will just be using those factory clips, right? Yep. And it's going to be kind of loose in there, but don't worry about that because we've got other wires that need to go in there as well. Perfection. We're calling it a night. We'll see y'all tomorrow. We know a ton of you can relate to the slowly but surely progress on builds and it is no different here in our shop. So we checked a bunch of stuff off the list on this episode, but the list continues. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and the notifications because I am working busily editing episodes to keep you all entertained. We cannot thank you enough for watching. We love y'all. We'll see you next time.